Hey going guys, welcome back to my very short Git primer. Um, in this video, well in the la let's recap, in the last video we basically just sat in the blackboard and talked about what Git is and we looked at some of the different workflows we could use in when we work with Git. So remember that in Subversion or CVS we are forced to use the central server model. And each developer only has a working copy that is the current state of the repo. So that's kind of how subversion and CVS and all these non-distributed version control systems work. In Git, we can work however we want. So we looked at the single developer models. We looked at central server. we had the benevolent dictator type thing which is fairly common for a lot of open source projects and this idea of we can have a hierarchical I've spelt that wrong but that's okay I don't it's not a spelling test people so in git we can kind of work however we want we, if we're a single developer we can just have a single git repository on our computer and that's it or a better way of working is we push to some device, say a USB stick or a server somewhere. For multiple developers, we can look at we can work as a central server model, which is similar to how Subversion and CVS work. Um, or we've got this idea of a benevolent dictator, which pulls changes that he deems worthy to his master branch. And then, of course, this hierarchical thing. So each repo can be pushed and pulled from everywhere. Um, and the whole thing about this is it's distributed. Um, and what that means is that every work, every, in Subversion and CVS, we have this idea of a working copy, which is this thing here. Um, in Git, all working copies. are full repositories. So every working copy is a full repo. It has the entire history of all the repository. So you can go back in time and do whatever you want. And a lot of this stuff is local. We don't have to contact a server because we have a full copy, a full clone of the repository for us. So this makes Git really fast and really powerful. And it's why everybody should use it. Well, okay pick the right tool for the job but yeah so that's what we covered in the last video in this video we're going to be pretty much all practical so in this video what we're looking at is the single server mode so or single developer mode so we're going to look at how we can create a project we're going to look at how we can add files we're going to look at how we can commit changes and then we're going to look at how we can push those changes and that'll probably be enough for today but that's what we're going to cover so this is going to be all practical now I'm going to do it inside a Linux terminal because that's what I'm comfortable with but you can get git on Windows There's a version in, in also in Sigwin, so if you like using Sigwin, that's an uh, option for you. Oh, I can't type. T I can't write today. I apologise for that. Um, and a lot of IDEs have plugins. I know Eclipse has a, a plugin for Git. Um, but like most of my videos, if you want to understand how something works, then we have to use it correctly. So 
we're going to run it from a command line, and in my case, it's going to be a Linux terminal. But that shouldn't matter. So let's continue. Uh, there we go. And here we are in my terminal. So what do we have to do? Well, this is just a. I'm in my home directory now. First thing we need to do is before we start using git, it's a good idea to tell git a little bit about ourselves. And we do that with the command git config. So there are all the options to git config. We don't really care about all of them. Git config dash dash global. What this means when we use global is this is going to be a global setting. Git has the option of using per project settings or global settings. Um, all we're doing here is setting our name. So it's and we're probably not going by different names in different projects. So we can just let this be a global setting. And it's going to be user.name Michael in my case. And that's it. We've set our name. In the same way we can set our email address. So git config global user dot email Michael at twenty papercups.net. Pow. So now git knows my username and it knows my email. There's a couple of extra things that I'm going to do right now that make will make things a lot clearer. I like having colors. Okay? And git has some options of doing all these colors for different things. So git config dash dash global color dot diff auto. So what this is going to do is git is going to do colorful diffs, which makes things a little bit easier to see. I like doing colors. Some people hate it, but I do. So we're also going to do this for status. So we'll get colorful status information and branch, which we're probably not... Oh, we might look at branching today in this video. I haven't decided yet.